Okay, here we go. This is how to add a pip with or without a mask using QuickTime Pro. First, open the main movie file. You select the portion of that file to which you want to add a pip. Then you open the pip file with QuickTime Pro. And this can be a still photo, a GIF, a video, a text file saved in movie format, any of the various items that QuickTime Pro can open. You select all of the pip and you copy it. Then go back to file A, choose edit, add to selection and scale. This layers the pip onto the section of the main movie which you selected in step two. At this point, at this point the pip will appear in the upper left corner of your movie frame. And if that's where you want it to be, you can, you're done. You can save or export the file and be done with it. If you want to change where the pip appears in the video, you open the properties for the main movie, properties, video properties, under the edit pull-down menu, and you'll see buttons there to offset the movie. And put it into the place where you want it to be. Next, if you want to mask the pip, you'll see in the properties window there's a mask well. You add a black and white mask to that mask well. First you select the track of the pip, in this case it would be track 2, and you add that mask to the mask well. And please note, the photo for the pip or the movie can be any size. You can scale it down. But the mask itself must be the same size as your main movie file. Also note, I find a PNG format works best for the mask. Although others will work. Uh, any kind of photo, black and white photo, will work. And as I said, you can adjust the movie properties, move the pip around on the screen to where you want it to appear. When you're satisfied with the size and location of the pip, you can save as or export to the movie format of your choice. So, what I'd like to do next is to review this with you. In this case, I have a 30 second to 29 second movie of my dog, Sadie. And what I want to do is, or what I have done already, is I have in the first, uh, starting at zero and at ending at about the eight second mark, I have added a photo with a mask right there. That is the uh, black frame with red type, a title. And you can see in the mask well here, I added a black and white copy of the same thing. You may need to click the invert button uh, so that the proper part of the underlying picture shows through. And to show you what you can do with an irregular mask, in the middle of this movie, in track three, starting at eight seconds and going on for another 10, I added a little uh, a GIF file, making funny faces there. And that one, you can see, has this mask here, just a black hole for my face to show through. And finally, I have added, uh, for simplicity, uh, just a photo up here in the corner, a photo of the glacier, with no mask in the whale. And you can see that has been scaled down to 240 by 180, and I offset it, uh, at the moment it's offset 980 uh, by 30, if I wanted to make that uh, 950 to move it back a ways, or 990 to move it over. This other offset on the y-axis, I uh, can move it up or down as needed. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You've got your main track, you select the portion you want to add the pip to, and add the mask as needed. They'll each play during the timeline that you told them to play. So all you got to do now is save your movie, save as under a new name, or export the file to your desired format. Bada boom, you're done. That's pips and masking using QuickTime Pro. One more thing I want to show you before we're done, and that is you can add a pip to your movie, which is the same uh, scale to the same size as the movie. In this case, it's a, a picture of looking up through the trees at the blue sky. And what I've done is created a mask out of that, black and white, and the white part shows through. And this is a way to create a border around your movies. That's also one of the options, use a mask as a border. Pretty cool. Oh, strange little creatures, aren't they? Even Mink Henry, she's a part of this, and, and yet what do we really know about how she thinks and feels? Well, I didn't mean to start a philosophic discussion. 